ういうやっぱりあのお店に行ってなんかこうあるべきだっていうことを教える機会がない。During the 2019 Tokyo International Pen Show, Daniel Zut and Bruce Iman were asked to give a talk on the differences between the American and Japanese pen scene. They were asked to do so because they both know the Japanese culture extensively and can speak Japanese fluently. Bruce grew up in Japan and goes back and forth between Tokyo and the United States for his company ThinkOnPaper.com. Dan has almost 500 bottles of ink and has traveled to many of the rural small Japanese pen stores and has gotten their ink. This is their English summarization of the talk that they gave in Japanese at the Tokyo Pen Show 2019. Hi, my name is Bruce Iman. I own a company called Think on Paper, based in San Francisco. Today I'm at the Tokyo International Pen Show. I just came off of a talk show with Daniel Zut,、uh, who's a, a friend of mine who lives in Tokyo.、Um, I live in San Francisco, but come to Tokyo several times during the year. He lives in Tokyo, comes to the U.S. several times a year. So we had a talk of comparing. The fountain pen hobby between the U.S. and Japan. We talked a lot about how we got into this hobby,、um, what sources we have. I think it's, it's clear that Japan has so many retail stores and events, so you have a lot of opportunities to touch and play with these pens. You know, it's it's hard to know what you want or what you like without being able to use them. And in America, it's really hard to. Have that opportunity, and the Japanese people are so fortunate with all the great fountain pen stores like Itoya, and just even even a small stationery store has a good selection of fountain pens. So we talked about that and how in America we almost have to depend on online sources,、um, online retail store or online shops where you you know instead of touching the product, you have to rely on their YouTube you know unboxing videos or analyses. And you know we study the information, we devour information on the web, because otherwise, you know, we we're not sure what we're getting. Whereas in Japan, there's a probably a weaker online community because they're so blessed with real life opportunities to use what they want. And the podcast is one thing that、um, I think many Japanese are really not familiar with because they don't. You know, I've looked for Japanese language podcasts. There's literally nothing like that out there, and, and so、um, the podcast is one thing that's definitely missing. And I, Instagram is really、um, uh, is, is is really where it's where I get most of my information about new things that are coming out, whether it's store originals or whether it's、uh, or it's store original inks or pens. So that 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 really is a good way to to get a view into both the Japanese and the American markets. And we talked to Ed. What is Missing maybe from the Japanese online purchase experience, and I realized that like through Rakuten and Yahoo Auction, a lot of the regional pen stores actually do sell their stuff, and that's something that like even though there might not be a the the, the business might not have their own web page,、um, they do actually sell through those sites. You know, the major ones that come to mind are Usagiya in Okayama Ken, Okayama Prefecture, and、uh, Bungu no Mori from Sendai,、uh, who has a series of like I don't know if it's eight or twelve, eight, ten, twelve inks. Um, also recently started doing lap ten,、uh, Hogado in、um, Ehime, I think it's Ehime Ken in in Shikoku, as、uh, they sell through lap ten their inks and their pens as well. You know, it, but you could try Yahoo as well. Like you know, one of the ones that comes to mind for Yahoo is Penpoint. Many or most of the Japanese regional sellers that have original inks. Have some kind of online presence to be able to、uh, to buy them.、And、it's just a matter of finding it, and then I think an underlying um, um, issue、uh, for all of them is is that there might not be a single one that has an English language site. And so if you can't read Japanese, you're out of luck. So、um, there were a few questions after our talk. One was about、um, what they were curious. What kind of online sources we have in the states for learning about this? Of course, we talked about the Fountain Pen Network and also some of the major online retail sites、uh, like Boulay and even for stationary jet pens.、Um, they they they're not familiar with the the extensive online opportunities because they have such good retail stores. So my impression is actually Japanese online kind of fountain pen stores. Are very poor, poorly designed, and kind of an afterthought because they're focused on the retail side.、Um, but I tried to explain, you know, how thorough the American sites are because you have to rely on videos and analyses.、Um, you know, 
without being able to touch things, you have to rely on the detailed analysis. So I tried to explain how the American sites are quite impressive, and I think there's a lot of room for Japanese sites to improve. And then the second question was, well, if, if there's plenty of room for the Japanese sites to improve, what are some of the improvements that we would like to see between Daniel and myself? And what came to my mind was how in America we can get uh, bales of ink samples, um, you know, like two, two to four milliliter samples. And to me that's invaluable because I don't want to buy a whole bottle just to find out that the color was different from what it looked like on the website. Uh, and to my knowledge, there are no vendors in Japan uh, who offer ink samples. Um, so that was my big request. I think Daniel agreed with me that um, if only we could do that in Japan, we'd be more willing to take risks and try all kinds of inks from all over Japan. So that's something I love to see in Japan. They will not sell anything to you unless you go there. They will not hold something for you and they will not send it to you. You have to go to the physical store. Um, one place that's like that is a new store in Iwate Prefecture. Uh, Iwate is one of the northern ones that's below, right below Aomori. Uh, the place is called, interestingly enough, Pen. They have six inks, one of which is really unusual. And um, when I called them up on the telephone, they said, um, you have to come to the store. Uh, we'll tell you on the phone if we have it, but we won't hold it for you. And I said, well, you know, why would I come all the way from Tokyo uh, you know, to Iwate, which is like in a car, it's like an eight and a half hour drive. And they said, well, the whole point is they want you to visit the place because the reason they're doing this is to improve, is to, is to increase travel and, and sightseeing in the prefecture. Other things I think, in Japan, there's such strong, like, local brands that there's a lot of, like, you know, pride, local pride, right? Like, in an America, you can't even have local pride because we don't make anything anymore. So, you know, they're the vintage people who like the good old days, but I think there's a lot more willingness to experiment because you're not bound to the local team, you know, like that. So, I, I think Americans are a lot more willing to go to Alibaba and buy some, you know, that unknown, ne never heard brand. Yeah, and then try it out. If it doesn't work, it's only like three bucks a pen. Um, or people who, you know, they're much more innovative. Like, they're not scared of going to the Japanese auction sites without really knowing what they're getting, but just kind of crossing their fingers, hoping that it'll come. First thing that comes to mind is the lack of, like, you know, there's very small uh, vintage pen selling at, the Japanese, at these pen shows. There's pretty much, you know, I want to say today here, if we've got like 70 vendors, I want to say there's maybe three tables that I saw that are vintage pens, whereas when I went to San Francisco, there was there had to be 20, 30, or more. Uh, so that's the first thing that, that, that absolutely comes to mind. Uh, another thing is that uh, I don't think there's that many regional inks in the United States, it's just in general. Whereas, you know, this, this well, in Japan, that's a big thing. Local inks that are, you know, there's a lot of vendors that have the, the local inks here. So if someone said, well, why should I come to Japan and, and, and go to a pen show or visit pen stores and all that, you know, I would tell you that um, uh, you definitely have uh, a wider selection of local inks that you're going to be able to draw from at a, at a Japanese pen show. In this particular show, one of the other differences is, is that there's not a lot of people doing uh, tuning and grinding. There's maybe two or three the tables that are that are that are doing that. Yeah. Pen Cafe do some grinding and, and tuning, as well as Mr. Nakahana has his pen shaper thing, and then uh, paper. You know, also like you know, there's you know, that's one of the things that Bruce also like with his um, company and his approach to the analog, you know, uh, thing. Um, paper in America, like there's, you know, I can't even think of one. But like you know, I would say, oh, I want to go, you know, to America to a pen show to buy paper. And I would go for the Japanese paper. You know, there's that, that I can think of off the top of my head. There's at least six, eight different companies selling Japanese paper. Um, definitely want to mention something about Kobe Hakekaku. Those are the ones who do Grafilo and Lissisio. Uh, Grafilo is, you know, people who like um, uh, Tomei River, you're, you'll never buy it again. Once you get your hands on Grafilo, you will never touch that stuff again. And, and the pen case, there's like eight different pen case manufacturers here. Everything from cloth made of kimono fabrics to leathers, you know, to uh, exotic leathers, there's all that. And then the mixing ink clinic that's done by Mr. Takeda, um, which is something that like, uh, they have nothing like that in the United States where you, he has a bunch of, of inks that you can mix to make your own ink and he talks about like, you know, what inks combine to make what colors and stuff like that. 
Um, and, and yeah, and Mr. Takana speaks English also, so that's a, another reason to come. He's actually doing like um, uh, as an ink consultant now, where he goes out to different companies, and he and he makes he does collaborations with different companies. Uh, uh, when I say companies, I mean pen stores to make special inks for them, and some of them are really nice. The benefit of this show is that there's um, volunteer staff, there's English speaking people on the volunteer staff. So like if, if anyone's thinking like you know I, I wouldn't want to go there because I won't be able to communicate, that will absolutely not be the case. Most of the Japanese, uh, although they might not speak English really really well, they can certainly understand English. And there's all the volunteer staff that do speak English. So, um, you know, I can say that uh, if you're a pen enthusiast or ink enthusiast and what have you, uh, you will your your time and money will be well spent coming here to the show. So this is the second pen show in Tokyo. Surprisingly, you know, you think Japan with so many fountain pen companies that they've been doing pen shows for decades and decades. Um, last year was the first. Um, despite being the first, uh, they had 1,300 people three, um, over a two-day period, which is as big or if not bigger than the uh, Washington DC show. So it's a great success. Um, one thing I really like about the Tokyo show is that it's very new user friendly. Um, there are a lot of people who are interested in fountain pens. Um, some American pen shows can be a little daunting for novice, you know, first-time users. But this Tokyo pen show has not only kind of pen vendors, but paper vendors and kind of accessory vendors. It's very kind of easy to kind of come in, and you don't feel intimidated. Um, partly because there are no vintage vendors. Um, on the flip side, I would love to see more Japanese vintage vendors um, come at come to this show because as a person who's been in the fountain pen hobby, um, of course I'm interested in the new stuff and the limited editions, but I would love to see Japanese vintage pens too. So if they could expand into that space, that would make it even more exciting. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, they had a uh, show limited edition inks here, um, two inks. They have a fun theme based on like, it's called the Penguin's Tea Party. So they try to make it fun and lively. So, so not kind of a, a stiff show, but very relaxed. And what's good is that they have a lot of space between the booths, so you never feel cramped. There are, uh, I think, uh, 70 different vendors here, including about eight vendors from outside of Japan, such as Franklin Kristoff. Um, so I'd love to see more international participation, as well as expanding from new product to vintage. But um, I think everybody who's been here has been very happy, and I've, I've enjoyed both years coming to the show. I'm actually part of the organizing committee. Um, we're getting ready for the for next year's show already. Um, there's going to be a brand new kind of event hall about 20 minutes south from here, a place called Hamamatsucho, a brand new building. Um, it's going to be the first weekend of November, so it's going to be a little later than this year. Um, but um, we're really excited. It's probably going to be about the same scale. We're expecting two to 3,000 people. So if you want to start uh, booking your tickets for next year, um, think uh, first weekend of November in Tokyo. It'd be great if you're there. <laughs>